Hi everyone, it's Nancy and one of my friends asked me a couple questions about Alcohol Ink. So I thought I would give some comparisons here on some different card stock and you guys can determine if it's something that you want to get involved in. So um, Alcohol Ink is the, the company I know that most people are familiar with it is from Ranger. Um, they come in these small... Um, little bottles here. They are permanent ink and the best way I can describe it is it's very similar to um, like Sharpie markers. It's a, it's, a, it's a permanent ink. So once it's on, it's on. A lot of people do different techniques with alcohol ink and you can check YouTube. There's some great um, artists that make scenes with alcohol ink um, because of how fast drying it is and it looks like watercolors. Um, but there are several different colors out on the market, and like I said, I think the primary manufacturer that most people are familiar with is Ranger. Now, when you buy your alcohol inks, you can buy them individually, or you can buy them in packs of three, so if you want to try them out. And I would also recommend getting an alcohol blending solution, which basically is denatured alcohol, not regular rubbing alcohol. Um, you can get it in the hardware store, and it, it's called denatured alcohol. The other tool that a lot of people like to use um, is a blending um, block. And this is also by Ranger. And it's basically a block that has Velcro on it. And then you get these little um, applicators. They're not the foam. It's the same as the foam applicators, but this actual applicator is just like a piece of felt. So um, you can reuse them. You know, this one looks like I used it with some green and silver, probably doing Christmas cards. Or you have other applicators that you can use. So I'm just going to give a demonstration on a couple different types of surfaces here. And you guys can determine if it's something you want to do or not. All right, so the most common surface that people use this on is glossy paper. Now, this is not your photo glossy paper. This is um, specifically designed for crafting. This, this is a pack I got called... Um, from the paper cut glossy photo um, 50 four and a, four and a quarter by five and a half um, and you can see I paid just under six dollars for that and this is the most common way people use their alcohol inks so you're going to take your your blending applicator and we're just going to do some, a couple colors here this is called wild plum now I haven't used my alcohol inks in a while guys so and you just put a couple drops, you don't need a lot. And you can simply dab that on by itself and make some cool designs. And you'll see that the ink kind of moves around on its own. Or you can put some other colors with it. This one doesn't have any. I noticed the new ones, they've stopped naming them, but it's like a, a golden yellow color. You know, and you can do swiping, and you can do all kinds of neat designs. And if you wanted to do multiple colors, make a pretty neat background if you want to lighten the color up a little bit you take that alcohol blending solution you put a couple of that on drops on there and you can go in and continue to swipe color on off now I, I use some darker colors here so um, it's getting pretty muddied but it actually looks pretty neat when it's dried up it doesn't take very long to dry the other option you have let me get another piece of alcohol I'm sorry glossy cardstock here And you'll notice I am using a craft mat because this does get messy, it does stain, it is permanent, and this is pretty easy to clean up once you have the craft mat. Another way people do it is direct to paper, is just by dripping it. And you'll see that the colors will spread around. And again, you can just add color where you want it, and then it'll blend together.
This is a technique I use for backgrounds. I don't really do um, any kind of, you know, like painting or anything like that. I just mostly do backgrounds for mine. I like the colors, the way they blend. They also have metallic solutions, so you can add a little pearl or silver or gold to your design. And again, you can take some of that blending solution and drip that on there and you will see it will also move the colors around and lighten them. So you can see that spreading out. Now that was on um, the glossy paper. The next one I'm going to show you guys is on Yupo paper. Yupo paper is something that's new to me. I discovered it last year. Tim Holtz now sells it. Um, this is fake paper. It's made out of plastic. You can see here it says 100% polypropylene. You cannot rip this paper. You have to use scissors to cut it. Most people use alcohol inks or watercolors with Yupo paper. Um, because it does not, it's 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 plastic. So I'll show you guys how it works in those different combinations. Uh, let's try some. And like I said, there are artists on YouTube that you can see that take these alcohol inks and and make beautiful paintings with them. Now that one had like a pink halo come out of it. I think the biggest difference is that the Yupo paper gives you some time to work with it. So if you are an artist and you want to move it around, um, you can just grab a paintbrush here. So you could use it as a paint medium. And I think you just have a little more time with the Yupo paper to manipulate it than you do with alcohol because or sorry with glossy paper stock because this this glossy paper is it's dry now it's all absorbed in there and again with the blending solution you can go in there and move that around and make some cool designs now the blending solution is also what you're going to use to clean up your mat clean up any of your brushes um, because once that alcohol ink has dried it's permanent So just drip some of that alcohol solution on your mat and take a baby wipe and it'll come up. Or if you have alcohol, um, the little swabs that come in the packets in the first aid kit, you can use those alcohol wipes as well. All right. So that's on the Yupo paper. So you can see it just travels much further on the Yupo paper. You have a little bit more wet time on the Yupo paper. Um, it just gives it a little bit of a different look. That's something if you've never tried before. Um, this pack of Yupo paper I got from Blick Art Stores. But like I said, I know Ranger carries it now. Tim Holtz carries it. So you can get it on the smaller size um, cut up pre-cut already. And just to show the ink dabbing with the Yupo, we'll do that too. And 
And as I said, it gets pretty messy. I mean, you can see my fingers are getting stained already from moving things around. And I just did a little blue and some light pink on here. And this is on the Yupo paper. But it definitely moves and gets... It just disperses a little bit more on the Yupo paper than it does on the glossy paper. Okay. All right, the last one I'm going to try is watercolor cardstock. Now, um, this is, again, Tim Holtz's Distressed Watercolor Cardstock. Um, there's a textured side and a smooth side. I'm going to use the smooth side. And again, just do that direct to paper dripping. And you can see it absorbs immediately. There's there's no moving. I mean, once it absorbs, it's it's dried into the paper there. And like I said, it's it's very similar to using alcohol markers. I'm going to assume if you have alcohol marker refills, they are going to be very similar if you want to use those. I don't know that you could refill your alcohol markers with this ink. I don't recommend that, but if anyone's tried that, go ahead and comment below. I have not tried that. So you can see it doesn't it doesn't move once you layer it. It stays within that area where it's already been wet just like you know watercolors would do. And you don't need a lot. A little bit goes a long way. And you want to make sure your lids are on tight because if that gets out and drips anywhere, it's going to make a mess. So there it is. Like I said, the... The watercolor cardstock is just absorbing it much quicker. You don't have a lot of play time with that. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys, so we have glossy cardstock, we have Yupo paper, we have watercolor paper, is transparency paper. A lot of you guys have this for using on shaker cards. I have a small piece here and you always want to check it because sometimes the transparency paper has a protective coating on it. I don't think this one does. And I like also to die cut these once I make a nice colorful design or background, whatever you're doing. You can cut it out into a butterfly, a flower, words. It's just very... It's fun to play with, and it does have that watercolor look to it. Now, on the acetate, it is not drying. Um, it's just pulling up on there. So you have time, just like with the Yupo paper, if you wanted to move it around, you could. But it's staying in its one spot and it's slowly starting to dry. And again, we can use the blending solution to move it around. And I'm just going to show you. I didn't do the blending solution on the cardstock, but I don't think it's going to have too much of an effect. Yeah, it just soaks right in. It's activating it a little bit, but mostly it's soaking it in. And I know there are artists that use brushes, canned air, to move the alcohol ink around. And here you could even do a little bit of swooshing and have that look.
So you have a lot of play time on the acetate because it's not, um, it's non-porous, so it, it doesn't give the alcohol ink anywhere to grab onto. There's no tooth to it. And then you could set that aside to dry, and that would make a pretty good, pretty neat background. Or again, die cut it and make something out of, out of the, the die cut shape. So there's a quick video for you guys on the difference with alcohol inks on glossy paper. And again, this is not photo paper. It's paper crafting glossy paper on Yupo paper. And look at how much that green moved when the blending solution was put on there. It pushed all that other green out of the way and just layered on top of there. I want to see if it'll move some more. The, the Yupo paper just continues to spread and move around. Again, you can see here on the glossy paper, it's very limited to where it's going to go. It's going to spread out, it's going to dry, but it's soaking into the glossy cardstock. So once it's reached how far it's gonna go, it soaks in, it dries, it's down into the paper. With the Yupo paper, it's sitting on top. It's not actually soaking into the paper. So you can see it's raised. Can you see that, how it's pooling up and it's raised? And it's still continuing the move. And the reason it's continuing the move is because it's not soaking into the paper. So you have a little more play time. You have a little more movement, flexibility with the Yupo paper. More like a wet on wet watercolor look. And then the acetate, again, it's sitting on top. It is not spreading out and moving. It's staying in one area unless you would actually move it. And this has now begun to dry. I can see it drying. It's not as glossy in those spots. But it gives you a real wet, wet watercolor look without having the halos, the circles. So I hope you guys enjoyed my demonstration. If you have any questions, please post them below and I will try to answer them for you. Um, again, cleanup is really easy. You just take some denatured alcohol or the blending solution and you just dab that wherever you have it. Very similar to Copic markers. Bic permanent markers, same thing. And it wipes right up. Easy cleanup. Thanks again for watching, guys, and keep on stamping.